after uh, mastering um, techniques in a different part of the arm, uh, we can make um, those motions a little more complex and, and move to the next step and practice uh, more advanced technique. Some of those exercises I show you, they still within uh, a sort of, to speak, a vertical uh, dimension uh, where beats still applied from upward, downward, and then back uh, upward, uh, which sometimes we can use, but also we have to master a different approach and uh, invent uh, different dimensions, and maybe combine uh, several dimensions together. For example, if uh, <clears throat> we still take um, uh, the uh, technique that we just spoke about for wrist, wrist, forearm, and the whole arm of spring-like motion, um, which basically apply vertically, but we can add a, a different motion, and that motion is this, so which uh, makes by the whole arm. But we can combine this motion along with the wrist and make and make uh, this motion going sort of forward, outward in a horizontal dimension. But we still need this motion. And uh, I would suggest practice first, practice uh, this motion and uh, wrist motion separately before you combine them together because it's, it's quite challenging. So it's very spring-like motion, but it goes in this direction. So um, if um, <clears throat> uh, we look from, from this position, and it's where main orchestra, uh, majority of the musicians are sitting in front of us, so they will see that impulse are going towards them. Uh, and uh, it's much clearer than uh, impulse just going into the floor next to our feet uh, and then dies there. So it's a very beneficial approach <coughs> and uh, type of technique, but it's very challenging um, because different parts of the arm involve and uh, different type of the motions involve. So wrist. Uh, sort of applies within this rounded motion of the arm. So rounded motion of the arm and within this wrist is applied with a spring-like stroke. It could be this way or it could be this way. Just depends on what type of music we are conducting. Um, it is also important with all of this technical approach to understand that all of those techniques are taken separately, um, have little volume. All of those techniques, if they're not applied alone with a sense of contour of sound, uh, it has very little volume either. So, <clears throat> to work on uh, getting sound, as I suggest in, in my book, uh, practice with a different um, weight of the bottle, or a tennis ball would be, would be fine, but it should be a different weight. So, but, but the thing is that the motion, when you take the bottle and then transfer arm for another bottle, so let's say it's one, two, one, two, if we have an empty bottle and we have a bottle full with water, uh, eight ounces bottle, uh, the, uh, what, what should happen that after taking a heavy bottle, we have to control that arm is not uh, rebound back drastically. So the basically motion stays the same, st same distance, 
same speed. So one, two, one, two, instead of one light, two heavy, one, two heavy. Okay, so that, that exercise will give us a sense of the sound and also, uh, uh, most importantly, will give us a um, control over our muscles, the little muscles within, within our arm.